Welcome to Design Domination, where you'll learn to become a better, more business-savvy designer so you can dominate your competition. Hi, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Colleen Grotzer, and in this episode of Design Domination, I talk about screening prospects. Stick around to find out why you should even vet prospects in the first place and how to do so. Many graphic designers are so excited when a new shiny prospect contacts them that they miss a crucial step, and that is screening the prospect. But having a vetting process in place is vital so that you can position yourself as an expert and you can evaluate the prospect and the work before taking it on. Here are six reasons that freelance designers should screen prospects and how to evaluate them. So the first one is to show that you're not waiting around. Now you could consider implementing your screening process before a prospect even reaches out to you. And you would do that by having a form on your site with an apply now button. This tells prospective clients you don't just work with anyone, whether that's true or not. It also makes it seem like you're in demand and highly sought after. Number two is to fend off potential problem clients. Now this one is huge. Problem clients are those that disrespect you in some way. And as I've mentioned in previous episodes, respect isn't just about politeness. One way that prospects can show you respect is by following your process from the very beginning. For instance, I ask prospects to fill out a short questionnaire on my website or via email. If they call instead, I usually direct them to the form or email them the questions. And then I evaluate their answers. If they and the work seem like they would be a good fit, then I reach out and ask that they schedule a call via my Calendly link. Now, most people have told me they love this, they're impressed by it, and they find it to be a very easy streamlined process to follow. However, (laughs) a couple prospects have balked and they've stated that they prefer having a call up front and they didn't want to use my scheduling link. Well, that's okay because that's not how I work. And I explain that providing this information up front will make our call more productive because that will give me time to check out their website, learn more about what they do, and what they need done, and then I can prepare any questions that I might have in advance of our call. Now, usually if they aren't willing to do those things, that's a sign to me that they will be difficult to work with later in the process. You know, they're not looking to be led. They want to do the leading. (laughs) That's not to say that you have to be so strict that you never deviate from your process, okay? I mean, if you're experiencing a slow time, then maybe you're okay with starting out with a call that's fine. You know, maybe you're okay starting out with a call all the time. That's totally okay. But the point is that you're showing that you're an expert with a process and that you're not at the whim of every prospect. You're kind of testing them out and you usually want to avoid the ones that are trying to test you out to see if they can get their way. (laughs) Number three is to evaluate whether or not you should take on the work. So just because a prospect comes to you asking you to do a certain type of work doesn't mean that you have to take it. I mean, maybe you're not interested in that work. Maybe you're too busy. Maybe you're not good at that type of work. Maybe they need it super fast. And that right there could be a huge red flag. Now, as I mentioned in episode 45, 14 reasons graphic designers are seen as order takers Taking on any and all work can actually cost you more than what you get paid. It might require you to spend a lot of time understanding what's involved in that work, or you might actually mess something up in the process because you're not aware of everything that's involved to get the job done right. So it can end up costing you time, money, and your reputation. Number four is to see if you want to work with this person or organization. Some prospects have the attitude that you should consider yourself privileged, (laughs) that they even approached you in the first place about a project, that you should be grateful or consider yourself lucky to work with them. But, you know, it's a two-way street. You, too, have a say in whether or not you want to work with this person or this organization. 
as a freelancer, you're not obligated to work with everyone. So let's say that this prospect's mission or their business values go against some of your beliefs, which may or may not be religious in nature. They could be ethical beliefs that you hold. For instance, I've spent all of my life rescuing dogs and helping rescues and shelters. So if a dog breeder were to contact me, I would politely decline. Once many years ago, I was contacted about designing a magazine that would feature semi-nude women in provocative poses. Um, no thanks, not a good fit, <laughs> you know, but like, let's say you're a vegan. Maybe you wouldn't want to do work for a company that sells meat products. So those are some things that you can think about. Number five is to save time and effort and find out if they can afford you. Part of the screening process should involve the money talk. Talking money up front is what experts do, and it helps you find out if you should even consider spending time providing an estimate in the first place. Now, some prospects may simply not have the budget or expectation of cost, as I call it, that aligns with what you would charge for that work. Otherwise, it might be a case of them not valuing the work. Oftentimes, clients looking for cheap work will say that they want something simple or basic. <laughs> they talk about the work like it's meaningless, that there's not much involved. And that usually means that they have no budget or they're just unwilling to spend much because they just don't see the value in the work. If they say they're looking to spend $50 for a logo design and your rates for that start at 2000, well, you don't wanna waste your time writing up an estimate or a massive proposal that they will only end up declining, right? And sometimes prospects might be trying to find out what to budget for. I once had an organization contact me about a website design and their expectation of cost was way out of alignment with what I told them I would charge for what they were asking. So imagine my surprise when several months later, they contacted me again to say, hey, we've raised the money and now we're ready to get this website done. And I'm like, oh, that's great. And talking money up front also gives you an opportunity to say that, you know, you might still be able to help them out, but on a smaller scale or maybe in smaller ways over a period of time rather than all at once. You know, if either of those options is indeed possible and if you're interested in doing that at all. But that way, at least you're not writing up a proposal for this gargantuan project that they cannot afford and you're focusing on what you're able to do for them in that price range. Number six is to find out if they are serious or just shopping around. Now this kind of goes hand in hand with what I just explained in the fifth point, if the prospect is just shopping around and they're not really serious, they're usually hesitant to spend much time talking to you or sharing information about their needs or their business when you ask for it. If they balk when you request a call or ask questions before you provide an estimate, then it means that they don't value your expertise and they're just looking for an order taker. They're also probably looking to pay by the hour and a low rate at that. Or maybe they just don't know enough to share with you. And that's a problem too, because that often means that you're not dealing with the decision maker and that's vital. So you don't rely on someone else there to do the selling for you. Now let's move on to how to evaluate a prospect. So after you've talked to the prospect and you have gotten more information, it's time to evaluate the organization and the opportunity. Some questions that you can ask yourself are, and you could even make a worksheet and include these questions so you remember each time. Has this individual demonstrated respect towards me and my process so far? How much do I need this work? Am I interested in this work? Do I want to work with this person? Do they see the value in this type of work? Would this work contribute nicely to other work in my portfolio? or would it be more of a one-off piece that I may not want to show? Would this work go against any of my beliefs? Would having this company in my client list be good for my business? Can they afford my rates? Are they just shopping on price? 
Are they trying to negotiate my fees for this work? Another way that you can vet a prospect is to look them up on the Better Business Bureau or another similar website to see if there are any complaints. You can also do a regular search online to see if there are any good and bad reviews elsewhere. Now, many years ago, another graphic designer contacted me after seeing work on my site from a mutual client. And while I hadn't experienced any issues up to that point, I learned that this designer had been stiffed by this client. So I hope that you now understand how implementing some form of a screening process can really help you. Working with a client who isn't a good fit can be a really stressful experience. And that only results in both parties feeling resentful, and that means you won't be asking them for a testimonial, and you won't get any work from them in the future, and they won't refer you to others. So it's like a wasted opportunity. If you don't have a screening process in place and you now have a problem client on your hands, I suggest checking out episode 32, which is six types of problem clients and how to fire them. And then get that screening process in place to help prevent that in the future. If you liked this content, please leave a review and share it on social media. Do you need help enhancing your design skills or working through a freelancing issue? Go to creative-boost.com to apply for design mentoring. Also check out the free resources and join us in the Design Domination Facebook group.